Hey there everybody, I like the way this cherry blossom came out, so I thought I'd make a how-to video out of it. I did some real-time video. But here, I have my colors. Now you see these right here. This is a set of five colors that I used to do this whole picture. And this is just a fancy, I, I just got carried away making a fancy chart on the wall. But all it is is the most distant color fading to the foreground color and then the exact opposite around the outside. Foreground colors down here, background colors there. It's just like my other video, How to Paint Foliage. There's two of those. There's, in every painting I do, I use a shadow color. I use a true color, meaning the color of the object I'm painting. And then I use a light source color. That doesn't mean that there are three exact colors. It means that there are those three influences and every color I mix is a degree of those colors in it. So on this I have five of them. So my most distant color is the, the, the shadow color but lightened with the light source color because they're distant and I, I want them to look like they're, they've got some shadow but they don't have any direct light, so it's not illuminating the saturated color. So, so it's just kind of a gray blue. My shadow color is typically just black, black and blue, just a, a dark blue for the shadow because skylight influences your shadows, makes them bluer. Not to be confused with sunlight, which shines directly onto objects, illuminating them in more of an orange glow. So moving on, my next color is a true, it, it, my true color is, is the magenta. But I have five, so the next one I mixed was my deep shadow color that was a purple. A mix of the magenta with the blue shadow. And then the next one was my true color, which was just the pink magenta color. It's like just magenta, white, little bit of red. So I had the brightest pink I could get with as little amount of white as possible. And then as I build out, I add more white to those, and then on my last one that looks white on this, I used some red and yellow in, in the white to give it a more orange glow to represent my brightest pink being most affected by the orange bright sunlight. And I want it to look like these cherry blossom petals are mostly white with a little bit of pink. Anyway long explanation for the colors. I start with, you see me working on the true pink right there. That's my middle color, the truest color, not affected by the shadow or the light source, least affected. And then I grab the lighter shade of pink after that and I start building these petals. You'll see when I do this, I'm, for almost the whole time, I'm using the the longest point of the brush. I'm not using it like I typically do, where, yeah, you can see me. The, the way I'm doing that is I, is I have the, I have the brush backwards, if there's such thing as backwards. If the angle of the brush is not flat against the wall, but just using the point. And, and it doesn't have to be an angled brush, maybe it's just a square brush. So I'm just using the corner of it. You know, <laughs> I'm going to stop trying to explain that because it's hard. And all I'm doing is just lightly dragging towards the middle. I dip it in the light color and then each blossom, I'm not making every blossom on the tree, just ones in the middle where you might focus on the highlight. I'm just kind of making all these little petals all around and then a couple full like five or six leafed blossoms where I start from the outside and just keep going in. I'll flip the brush over, see me going upside down right there, you don't see it, but I'll, I'll just use the very tip of that brush just lightly touching the wall with that corner and pulling in towards the middle. That's what gets that look that you see all over this is, is starting on the edge. I, I should get a brush so that you can see that technique, but I, I think I've got good enough video. I get lighter and lighter and, and every degree of highlight has a boundary area. So you can see that I have most of my light pink 
and a smaller area within the darker pink, then my lightest, more white color is a smaller area within the lighter pink. So as it gets lighter, it also gets smaller and, and maybe more towards the top of each of these little clusters. I think that the choice of color makes a bigger difference than the brush technique because I really worked on these colors and redid them several times and tried to really fine tune them. So there, there I am painting. I do this a lot right? I do, where I do the negative space. I like to do, after I get my basic patterns, then I'll come back and fill in negative space. Here I'm putting more distant, uh, so that's like the, the um, deeper shadow color with, with uh, the white, so that I have the, so that I'm, I'm showing the back side of the tree being affected by just indirect skylight, but not sunlight. And then this darker color over the top, my darkest, deepest color is that purple that is the true color with my blue shadow. That gives the tree a real three, like a deep feel, like it's the middle of the tree where there's the most shadow. And then I come back over that. So it has that real misty backdrop. And you'll see at the end of the video, I'll have time lapse of me adding more negative space of the actual sky popping through and it gives it a lot of depth. Then I, I just go along and do it all the same way, just do, doing the true pink, and then I try in a lot of areas to do a smooth uh, graduation from the lightest color to the deepest color to the distant, and then other areas I have hard edges where it goes suddenly from the distant color to the pink to the front color. A, a lot of different combinations, but for the most part following the same pattern of the boundaries getting smaller and smaller as they get brighter and brighter and higher up within each cluster. So that's not a finished picture because I still had, had more to go when I was doing this. So here's me doing time lapse of, of uh, and this is a picture every three seconds, so it's way fast. But you can see me putting the bright blue behind it. And I later changed that to more of a purple sky, but that bright negative space suddenly makes this into like a object that has a back side and a front side, you know having that gradient of colors gives it that three.